So a lot of times um, stand-up open mics are like four to five minutes, so I'm not going to exceed the time. Um, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> We're off to a good start. Please, please laugh. Um, last time the person who laughed was stationed over there, around where those markers are, where that adorable young girl is coloring. Um, not biased. Anyway, she was sitting there, and she laughed at like 90% of the jokes, but you couldn't tell. Like, I always record my stuff because I'm vain, and um, you couldn't hear her laughing on the video. It was so sad. No, actually, I do post this stuff on YouTube. If you want to support an upcoming stand-up comedian, um, that's awesome, as you should, and um, I am stand-up momedy, so if you go on YouTube at stand-up momedy, you'll find me. Woo! Yay! Okay, that's great. That's awesome. And I'm always just so awestruck by um, the talented musicians here. I just, it's amazing what you guys do. Put yourself out there and the musical talent you have. I think it's so cool. And by always, I mean this is my second time here. So two for two. <laughs> two for two of seeing really talented musicians. Um, and by seeing, I mean seeing you here, because I will be leaving before you go, because I brought my, my, my child with me here today. So... Um, don't take it personally. Don't take anything personally. That's a good tip for life. Do not take anything personally. It's not about you. It's about them. Um, okay, so I want to do a ventriloquist act with my daughter, but I'm not sure I'd sit on her lap. <laughs> right? Because who's really in charge? <laughs> Friends sometimes ask if it's okay to curse in front of my daughter. She's six. And I say, absolutely not. I want my daughter to learn all her curse words from her mama. <laughs> my daughter actually said her first sarcastic comment recently. It's usually around the age of like seven, according to developmental psychology. Um, and I was just so proud of her. I was just, it was one of the happiest moments of my life that she has harnessed the tool of sarcasm. Although she did use it against me, so it was kind of a double-edged sword. Um, I'm not sure that my daughter likes me, but she loves when I do accents. So that counts for something, right? I tell my daughter to stop whining, um, and often she'll start yelling. And that's not what I mean, for the record, okay? I think she gets it now for sure, now that I like made a snarky comment to her. Yeah, no. Oh, but the good news is that how your child acts is not a reflection of you as a parent. It's a reflection of you as a person. <laughs> You guys are laughing so much, I wish I told my friends to come tonight. <laughs> Damn. I'm not trying to like make you feel bad for laughing. That's That would be idiotic of me. Never. Um, when all else fails, you can do rush hour parenting. Do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> A friend of mine once said, oh, another thing that applies from rush hour is you should never touch mommy's radio. There's a lot, of, a lot of commonalities with that movie. A friend of mine once said that all of my jokes should be about motherhood because I call myself stand-up momedy. Uh, that's very limiting. And moms are people too. I mean, we have interests, passions, and hobbies. We just have to put it on hold for 20 years while we raise our kids. And I do know that dads will do that at times too. I didn't mean to make like a whole feminist thing out of this. Although maybe I just did by saying that. How are we doing on time? We're good? She's my intern, okay, great. Next time you see a soccer mom driving her kids to practice, I want you to think about that beautiful painting on the sunset that she never had time to make or that melodic riff that she couldn't create on her guitar. Every three minutes, one piece of art dies before it even gets a chance to get off the ground. Because we're raising kids. So that's why I've created a campaign. It's called Save Mommy Arts. And 10% of proceeds from my free open mics will be donated to this worthy cause. Y'all, kids, do the math. What's zero times whatever the heck? Everything multiplied by zero is zero. Good job. I'm especially impressed with the adults because we know we've been through so much, our brains still work. That's awesome. Snarky. 
Did you guys know that the owner of Ground and Pound is a veteran stunt woman? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Honesty is the best policy. Now you do. That is so cool. You know, Sophia, once I did stunts for Power Rangers, I used to do cartwheels on my driveway as the pink Power Ranger. <laughs> I did, you weren't alive yet, what are you talking about? <laughs> the pink Power Ranger ended up being Felicity's best friend. I feel like that's a downgrade, no? I would have expected her to make it bigger. I mean, seriously, she was the pink Power Ranger. The other girl got yellow. And this was when we you know, associated pink with girls and yada, yada, yada. Anyway, any other 90s kids here? So like people that were born or young in the 90s. For kids that are here now, I don't even know if you know what that means. But the 90s was like before the 2000s. Anyway, um, so Saturday morning cartoons were really big in the 90s. Um, actually, I wasn't watching them though because I was going to Jewish church, AKA synagogue on Saturday mornings. I also couldn't watch TGIF on Friday night. Yes, I didn't come here for laughs, I came here for pity. <laughs> Because that's when Shabbat starts at night. Oh, pause. That's a beautiful rainbow, darling. Good job. Uh, so one time in the summer, um, Shabbat had not started yet, and I watched half of a Sabrina the Teenage Witch episode. But I'll never find out in the, about the ending. And I think there was a cat that died. I'll never know if it came back to life or not. And it haunts me to this day. Another show I didn't get to watch was Boy Meets World, because that was on a lot. OK, I'm not talking about the reruns. Yeah, I watched a lot of the reruns. They were all like out of order or whatever. It's not the same. I didn't get to watch the OG Boy Meets World on Friday night. So I never got to meet the world. <laughs> it's a big deal. I, do, I grew up in a Jewish bubble. Does anyone else grow up in a Jewish bubble? <laughs> <laughs> and I actually, I meant to say, well, I'm working really hard on actually not having that happen. But um, just so we could rewind for a second, I get some help from the crowd. Did I just say, did anyone else grow up Jewish bubble or religious? Because I meant to say like any religion, but I might have said Jewish. Make sure to shake it a little more, just so my, my heart comes out of my body entirely. Yes. And we're almost there, but like not quite. Okay. Okay, let's go with the mic. Oh, the controller put that. It's too bad. Okay, I'm wrapping it up. So if you want to learn more about Judaism, you can look no further than the Rugrats Passover special. Um, I grew up in the 90s. I actually had a great life. I should I should move too so that when the camera moves it like doesn't look like I'm move it's moving. I'm mean, whatever. Um, okay, I had a great life. I, I really liked the 90s. I had a great my family was wonderful to me and I'm really lucky. And it's actually one of the biggest struggles of my life because a lot of things have gone wrong and I can't blame it on anything except <laughs> so yeah, it stinks. Oh, I'm getting the coffee being made. That's a bad sign. Um, anyone here ever get hurt before, like ever? Yeah, I mean, exactly, rhetorical. Oh, you too, hon, that sucks. So I just wanted to say, I don't know if that helps in your healing journey, but um, it's not that they don't care, it's that they can't care. So you can Google it, it's cognitive empathy versus emotional empathy, and maybe sometimes that, that was you, but um, don't Google it now, Google it when I'm done, actually after everyone's done. Anyway, so that might come as a comfort. They, they can't. And um, <laughs> I tried intermittent fasting once, and I, I felt great. I mean, I was starving, but I looked hot, and that made me feel great. <laughs> Seriously, thank you guys so much. Pound, that's the pound from Ground and Pound. Um, thank you. And subscribe to Ask Stand Up Comedy, and have a great evening, everyone. Thank you, thank you. Woo! Woo!